Nancy Mama Mama Tai rejoins Omno. Good evening, I'm Jessica Lee. Welcome to News on 2. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said a new committee was required to coordinate the various private religious schools as the federal government has no intention of meddling into the affairs of state religious authorities. He said even though a policy on such centers could be established, the authority to take up action was up to the respective states. Jenayah, jenayah. Remaja itu. Dan tingkat-tingkat di pasar dengan grill besi. Dan tidak boleh. Anak-anak ini. Saya bersepatah berjumpa dengan empat daripada tujuh yang selamat. Dan saya bertanya dengan mereka. Tentang bagaimana mereka boleh menyelamatkan diri. Persoalan di sini ialah biawak yang harus diikuti sepenuhnya. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this after opening the RL AMNO Delegates Conference at Day 1 2020 in Kanga Perlis today. He was commenting on the statement of Education Minister Datuk Sri Mazid Khalid that the ministry was prepared to cooperate and collaborate with state governments on toughest schools yesterday. In a bid to ensure the fire safety aspects are complied with, a team from the Trungano Fire Department conducted a surprise check at a religious school in Banda Chukai. Now, the operation, which was held at 9 a.m., was also to monitor the level of building safety and fire prevention, including in the dormitories. According to State Fire and Rescue Department Zone 2 Chief Azmi Abdurrahim, who led the 15 personnel team, the department has always placed great emphasis on safety features of the religious school and its dormitories. Kita haraplah uh, dengan inisiatif yang kita wujudkan ini uh, akan menjaminlah uh, keselamatan uh, semua penghuni yang berada di pusat-pusat uh, pengajian uh, Islam maupun tafiz atau sekolah pondok uh, khususnya. A talk on ways to prevent fire and demonstration on how to extinguish a fire were also held for the school students and teachers. Offences that were identified during the inspection were reported to the management for further action. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak took some time to visit the injured Darul Quran Itifakia Tafis School students at Hospital Kuala Lumpur HKL Emergency Ward today. Six of the victims were injured after jumping out of the school's topmost floor window. Two students are still in critical condition in HKL's intensive care unit, ICU, and have yet to regain consciousness. Saya dapati bahawa uh, mereka berada dalam kawalan yang uh, sangat uh, baik uh, dan doktor-doktor uh, di HKL ini uh, telah dan sedang uh, melakukan yang uh, terbaik uh, dan mengikut mereka, uh, mengikut pada andaian ataupun prognosis mereka ada peluang baik insyaAllah uh, untuk mereka pulih walau bagaimanapun ia merupakan proses uh, yang agak perlahan uh, tetapi kita berdoalah mudah-mudahan uh, mereka dapat pulih daripada uh, apa yang uh, mereka telah uh, lalui ini. He said this after spending about 45 minutes visiting the victims of the tragic school fire. Also in attendance were Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dr. Sri Jamakir Bahrom, Jakim's Director General, Tan Sri Othman Mustafa, Kuala Lumpur Police Chief, Dato Amar Singh Ishar Singh, and HKL Director, Dato Dr. Zainina Mohamad Zain. Meanwhile, three victims earlier treated at Ward 7 of the hospital were allowed to return home last night after their condition have stabilised. Former Selangor Menteri Besar and former Vice President of UMNO, Tan Sri Muhammad Muhammad Taib, has applied to rejoin UMNO. Prime Minister and UMNO President Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak made the announcement at the UMNO headquarters at the Putra World Trade Center, PWTC, today. Tan Sri Muhammad Taib masuk, dia masuk dengan penuh ikhlasan, uh, tanpa apa-apa tuntutan pada kita. Ini kerana... Kesedaran perjuangan saja, tak ada soal jawatan, tak ada soal apa-apa. 
In delivering the announcement at a media conference today, Datuk Sri Najib added, Tan Sri Muhammad has realized that the opposition's struggle, namely PKR, is in vain and is against with his soul, and because of that, God has opened his heart to return to UMNO. Tan Sri Muhammad, who was present at the media conference, said he will give his full commitment towards the party and Barisan Nasional in preparing for the next general election. Orang Melayu kena solid, kena bersama-sama dalam UMNO ini untuk mengukuhkan kekuatan orang-orang Melayu dalam negara ini. Ini yang sebenarnya telah bermula sejak kita 1946 dah tu ya, bila orang-orang Melayu bersatu. The man was shot seven times as he was driving along Jalan Besar Kuala Medang Sungai Koyan in Lipis, Pahang last night. Lipis District Police Chief Superintendent Azri Agma Ayub confirmed the incident that occurred near the Selinseng gold mine at around 10 p.m. According to Azri, the victim 55, who is a businessman, was on his way home to Raub when he was shot at a close range by five male suspects who were in a proton wira. The victim was taken to Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Hospital in Termelo for treatment and was reported to be in stable condition. The motive for the shooting is still being investigated. The case is being investigated under Section 3 of the Firearms Act and Section 395-397 of the Penal Code. Two temporary flood relief centers in Langkawi closed this morning as the river water level was at 2.9 meters, a reading below the danger level of 3.4 meters. The relief centers are located at Kadawang National Secondary School and Kampong Raja Padang Masirat Hall. Langkawi Disaster Management Committee Chairman Ishahak Murad said 173 people from 13 villages who were transferred to two temporary shelters had been allowed to return home. Meanwhile, 17 families from Kampung Gelam, Kampung Boho Masjid, Kampung Belak, Kampung Boho Tempoyak and Kampung Padang Wahid had all been transferred to the Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Kedawang Hall. The Kampung Raja Padang Masirat Hall, meanwhile, was occupied by 27 families from Titi Changwang, Kampung Raja Atas, Kampung Boho Berendam, Kampung Bukit Raja, Kuala Teriang, Kampung Boho, Kampung Limbong Putra and Kampung Atas. The Langkawi Disaster Management Committee said they remain on standby should the floods continue. The continuous rain in the island since Thursday until yesterday morning has caused several residential and road sections in Langkawi to have a depth of 1.5 metres. Three flood relief centres in Pulau Pinang were still in operation by midday, housing 68 affected residents from two districts. Now, according to a state fire and rescue department spokesperson, the three centres are part of the seven centres that were open last night. The relief centres were opened in Sebrang Prai Tengah. And two more centres were opened in Dewan Orang Ramai, Kampung Kota Permatang Pasir and Kampung Gua Jering, each housing 31 and 25 people. Another centre was opened in Lubuk Meriam, Sebrang Prai Utara, with 12 residents taking shelter since yesterday. However, the floods in Lubuk Meriam was improving and the evacuees were allowed to return home. The Johor Immigration Department arrested 40 women of various nationalities, nine caretakers of the premise and nine customers in a raid at two spas and massage centers in Johor Bahru. They were all believed to be involved in vice-related activities. Immigration Department Director General Datuk Sri Mustafa Ali said the raids were carried out at residential areas, including condominiums. During the raid, several customers were found waiting for their turn to be served. Dan terpremis yang kita pilih tadi adalah merupakan resident ataupun kawasan pertempatan. Kondominium di atas dia, di bawahnya adalah spa. Tetapi dalam tempat spa itu ada tempat turun, tetapi banyak yang lain itu adalah merupakan tempat-tempat pelacuran yang diadakan. Bilik-bilik yang diadakan dan kita tahulah apa buku biliknya dan apa yang ditemui, kondom dan sebagainya. All the women were arrested under Section 515B of the Immigration Act 1959-63, while the caretakers were arrested under Section 561D of the same Act and taken to the Satya Tropica Immigration Depot for further investigation. The Twelve people lost their homes after fire gutted two houses in Kampung Rancha Rancha Darat in Labuan early this morning. Labuan Fire and Rescue Department Chief Zainal Madisin said one house was 90% burnt while the other house suffered 60% damage. 
due to the fire. According to Zainal, all members of both families were inside their houses when the fire started but managed to escape before the fire and rescue team arrived. The rescue team took about an hour to totally put out the fire after receiving the distress call at 8.18 a.m. Estimated losses and cause of the fire are still being investigated. One person was killed and two were seriously injured in a fatal accident involving a lorry and a car at kilometer 80 along Jalan Serian Sri Aman, Sarawak, last night. State Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department Deputy Chief DSP Bing Kok John said Nengi Kanchil, 33, who was heading towards Sri Aman, suddenly entered the opposite lane and rammed into an oncoming lorry. As a result of the crash, the lorry skidded to the side of the road and plunged into a 10-meter gorge. Bia Bianca Clement, 12, Nengi's niece, who was in the car, died when she was receiving treatment at Hospital Syrian, whereas her sister, Claudia Clement, was seriously injured. All the injured are being treated at the Sarawak General Hospital and are reported to be in critical condition. Another passenger, Katerina Clement, 15, Bia Bianca's older sister, being treated in Hospital Syrian for light injuries. DSP Bingkok, when contacted by RTM, confirmed the incident. The case is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. And up next, Burstwood Polytechnic to be completed in 2020. Burstwood Polytechnic is set to turn the district into an educational hub for Trunganu. Higher Education Minister Datri Idris Jusso said the Polytechnic, upon completion in the year 2020, would benefit 1,200 students. The permanent campus to be built at a cost of 180 million ringgit and is situated on a 70-acre site. It will be located around the areas of several existing education institutions such as Institute of Teacher Education, Sultan Mizan Campus, Imtiaz Quranic School and University Sultan Zainal Abidin. Perkat permulaan 1,200 orang pelajar, tapi dia boleh naik sampai 2,000, 3,000 lah. Itu perkembangan-perkembangan yang akhir. Uh, tapi untuk permulaannya untuk 1,200 orang pelajar politeknik. He added that Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi will be performing the project's groundbreaking ceremony this coming October 6th. Datuk Sri Idris was met during the handing over of the 146th community home at Kampong Maksara in Basut today. Bursut Polytechnic is the fourth polytechnic to be constructed in Trunganu following the construction of polytechnics in Kuala Trunganu, Dungun and Hulu Trunganu. And very well done indeed. The national contingent backed all seven gold medals on offer at the National Veldrome on the first day of the 2017 Kuala Lumpur ASEAN Para Games or APG KL 2017 today. Although the opening ceremony is only set to take place tonight, the country's cycling squad showed extraordinary spirit to achieve the great feat today. Paracyclist Mohamed Adi Raimi Amiza Zahan became the first gold medalist for Malaysia after he won the men's one-kilometer time trial C1-C2-C3 C2 event at the ASEAN Para Games track cycling competition. Mohamed Adi posted 1 minute 17.232 seconds to win the four-rider contest at the National Indoor Velodrome in Nilai today. Another Malaysian paracyclist, Mohamed Yusuf Hafizi Sharudin, got silver, while Singapore's Tan Han Bun won the bronze medal. Mohamed Najib Turano backed Malaysia's second gold after he clocked 1 minute 12.771 seconds to win the men's 1km time trial C4 event at the ASEAN Para Games cycling competition. Malaysia also got silver through Hafiz Jamali who clocked at the National Indoor Velodrome in Nilai. Indonesia's Fadli Imudin won the bronze. Nur Azlia Shafinas, assisted by Adila Noraidilina, romped to the third goal for Malaysian women's tandem sprint B at the ASEAN Para Games track cycling competition. The Malaysian pair beat Singapore's Emily Tan, assisted by Sarah Tan, in two heats in the final at the National Indoor Velodrome in Nilai. Malaysia also got the bronze through Nur Shahida Tajudin, assisted by Norozi Yanti Madrozi. 
UCI Paracycling Track World Championship 2017 bronze medalist Muhammad Afi- Afifi Rizan was in a class of his own, contributing the country's fourth goal in the men's sprint B event. Muhammad Afi- Afifi, assisted by Muhammad Kairul Ada Russell, defeated compatriot Muhammad Amin Najmi Romzi, who was assisted by Muhammad Firdaus Mamazonis. 2-0 in the gold-silver medal matchup. The bronze went to Singapore's Jason Ng Hang Su, assisted by Kelvin Sin Tekwang, who beat Brunei's Mohamad Izan Safri Radat and assistant Mohamad Faisal Mohamad Nur Fadila. The fifth gold medal was won by Zuhairi Ahmad Tarmizi in the men's kilometre C5 event. After a 1 minute 9.69 seconds finish ahead of the Philippines' Arthur's Estaquio Bouquet for the silver. The bronze was won by Indonesia's Sufyan Sauri. Nur Azlia Shafinas won the sixth goal for the country in the Women's Kilometre B event, clocking in at 1 minute, 19.359 seconds, followed by compatriot Nur Shahida, who won the silver. The bronze went to Singapore's Emily Lee. The final gold medal was obtained in the Men's Kilometre B event through Muhammad Afik Afifi, who finished in 1 minute 4.236 seconds, followed by fellow countryman Muhammad Amin Najmi for the silver medal, and Singapore's Jason Ng Hang Siu took home the bronze. Now, the ninth ASEAN Para Games will take place from today until September 23rd, offering 368 gold medals from 16 events contested. Now, with the opening of the 2017 Kuala Lumpur ASEAN Para Games in less than an hour from now, Malaysia hopes to bring home 103 gold medals to match the achievement of the Malaysian contingent at the recently concluded 29th SEA Games. Youth and Sports Minister Kari Jamaluddin said the one-hour-plus opening at the National Stadium Kuala Lumpur would start at 8.15 p.m. He said the 85,000-capacity National Stadium will see a full turnout after tickets, which were mostly sold online, were snapped up in no time. This year's edition will see the participation of 1,421 athletes from Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Vietnam and hosts Malaysia, competing in 16 events which are divided into various categories. Among the events are archery, athletics, badminton, chess, cycling, bowling, football and wheelchair basketball and tennis. Malaysia's contingent comprised 325 athletes and 167 officials led by Chef de Mission Dato R. Subramaniam. Focus will be on two world champions, Muhammad Ziad Zukefli in the short putt, long jumper Abdul Latif Romli and also Rio Paralympics 100 meters gold medalist Muhammad Rizwan Muhammad Pusi. This would be the third time the country is hosting the ASEAN Para Games after 2001 and 2009. Now, the Malaysian men's goal ball team had a strong head start at the ninth ASEAN Para Games, beating Laos 16-6 to in the round robin this morning. Held at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Centre, or MITAC, the Malaysian men's goal ball team, led by Husaini Samsudin as captain and teammates Muhammad Haikal Azani Azman and Muhammad Amirul Ahmad, persevered in their match back by the support of a strong home crowd. The home boys gave a firm start in the first half against their Laos opponent, consisting of Tong Kam Tong, Singh Mani Kamta and Yang Por. Malaysia continued to dominate in the second half, delivering a 10-point deficit to their opponent. The referee then stopped the match with five minutes to go to confirm Malaysia's dominance in their opening match in the round-robin stage against Laos with a 16-6 win. Moving on to soccer, South Korea have booked a place in the semi-finals with a thumping 7-0 win over Laos in Group A of the AFC Under-16 Women's Championship on Saturday in Chonburi, Thailand. Now, 2009 champions are now set for a final showdown with either Japan or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Needing only a draw to guarantee progression, the Koreans made an ideal start and took just seven minutes to take the lead through Ko Min Jung. Captain and leading goal scorer in qualifying Cho Min Jin added a second at the half hour mark. Ko then doubled her tally to make it 3 0 at half time. 
As rain began to pour late in the match, the floodgates opened as the Koreans piled on four goals in the final 10 minutes to add some gloss to the scoreboard. Defender Lee Soo-in got in on the act in the 80th minute, giving the Koreans a strong 4-0 lead. Ko completed her hat-trick by adding her third goal five minutes later. It did not stop there when Korean captain Cho scored twice in two minutes to complete a hat-trick of her own. It began in the 87th minute with a 6-0 scoreline before completing South Korea's punishment of Laos with a 7-0 win. Laos appearing for the first time in the tournament exit Thailand with three successive defeats and without scoring a maiden gold in the competition. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, a new committee needed to coordinate private religious schools. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.